Hello people, in this video we want to look at this topic neonatal jaundice. So we are looking at neonatal jaundice, not at adult jaundice. Okay. So um, this is a newborn baby, you can see it has this yellow tinge, you can make out, right? So basically neonatal jaundice is very important because high bilirubin levels may be toxic to the developing central nervous system. Is it toxic to um, yours and mine developed central, system, central nervous system? No for the developing central nervous system. Even ours it could be, but for theirs much, much more, right? What is toxic? High bilirubin levels. So, <clears throat> uh, jaundice means what? Jaundice means where there is high bilirubin level, right? How much more? So, bilirubin is high, means how much high? Okay, greater than 2. In adults, if it is greater than 2, then we will say it is um, a jaundice, right? Greater than 2. I think gram per deciliter. Just confirm this. This is for adult. No people, it's milligram. Okay. See, in adult, let's write the value here. So, for our reference, if it is adult, if bilirubin is greater than 2 milligram per deciliter. Okay, not gram. 2 milligram. Okay, I forgot many. Please, you don't forget. 2 milligram per deciliter. Okay, that is what is adult levels. Okay. But for child, we will come and we will calculate. But what you should understand here, basic things. If this, uh, uh, first of all, from where is this bilirubin coming? Bilirubin is coming because of, mostly because of hemolysis. When uh, hem uh, blood RBC breaks, look at this, fate of RBC. So, when uh, RBCs are there, these are your red blood cells, okay. What will happen? These will get destroyed. These will break. When these break, what will they release? They will release hemoglobin. This hemoglobin is getting converted, you can see here, to biliverdin and then bilirubin. Okay, so it is get it is uh, bilirubin is coming from where bilirubin is coming because of hemoglobin breakdown. Okay, and then what is normally supposed to happen to this bilirubin? It is supposed to be taken up by the liver and then it will uh, it will conjugate this unconjugated bilirubin and then it will be released in the fecal matter or the urine as tercobilinogen or urobilinogen respectively. However, in this baby, what will happen? There is so much of hemolysis, and this liver is not mature yet to make, uh, you know, to to handle so much of bilirubin. So, what will happen? Bilirubin will increase. Now, what will happen if bilirubin increases? <coughs> Jaundice. Basically, they are more concerned because it can affect the growing, sorry, the developing central nervous system. Okay. Now, um, look at this one here. Uh, some uh, quick points we are telling you here. If uh, the baby has jaundice on day one, as the day it is born, within 24 hours if it has jaundice, it's not good, it could be pathological. But if the baby looks fine and day two onwards it looks a little jaundice, this is this could be physiological. Okay, this is just a very rough rule. Okay, we will come to the finer details. So, uh, what you should do is whenever there is a newborn baby, you should visually inspect it for jaundice every 12 hours during the first 3 to 5 days of life. Every day you have to check, right? Um, 2 times, 12 hours. Okay, focus here guys. See how to check. Visually you saw the baby was looking yellow. If you can't do that, you have this transcutaneous bilirubin measurement. Okay, and you can just measure the value of the bilirubin. That is called as TCB, transcutaneous bilirubin you can measure, right? TCB or by visual method you can measure, we told you here. See, by looking at it you can clearly say. Um, then if yeah, there is yellow staining of the palms and soles, palms and soles of the baby, if there are yellow stain, that is very bad. If there is um, a staining of the nappy, right, of the baby's urinating, you can see yellow urine, isn't it? So all these you have to keep a watch on. There is a rule called as Kramer rule, guys. Kramer rule is uh, basically how to uh, assess how much of jaundice this baby has. So, uh, uh, how will the dermal staining happen? Dermal staining will happen according to this. They are saying it will happen cephalocaudal. <clears throat> okay. From the head to the tail. So, that is how the uh, dermal staining happens. So, what you should do? You should put the baby in good sunlight, all right? Or you can in daylight, basically. You should examine. You should blanch the skin. The skin should be blanched with digital pressure. So you just put some pressure on the skin and leave. Then you can see the yellow. The, the underlying color of skin and subcutaneous tissue should be noted. When you leave, when you press on the skin and leave, do it now. Press on your skin and leave. Can you see anything yellow? No, no, you don't. That's because you don't have jaundice. Okay, so you will be able to uh, know whether there is jaundice or not. Now, if uh, on the forehead you do and you leave, 
then there is blank uh, there's yellow color then in zone 1 if there is uh, yellow color 4 to 6 milligram per deciliter just by checking forehead you can tell that oh the bilirubin is more now imagine uh, the, the trunk trunk the chest you do and it is 6 to 8 and then you do on the zone 3 that is uh, here the pelvis area um, below the umbilicus right 8 to 12 milligram okay that is also very high guys these values are very high 12 milligram here then you will do the palms right 4 is here 4 and 5 4 and 5 are there for hand and leg hand and leg both have 4 and 5 see 4 and 5 4 and 5 4 and 5 4 and 5 actually 4 seems to be below the knee isn't it here but in this it is below the shoulder joint slightly different there, right okay so here um, uh, 4 if it is there 12 to 14 milligram per deciliter and if it is 5 it is very very high it is actually greater than 15 they are not saying 15 it is greater than 15 so <clears throat> the uh, one thing you can understand is uh, if there is yellow staining of palms and stole it's a danger sign palms and soles means 5 zone 5 isn't it so how many zo how many zones are there people kramer's rule uh, five zones are there. very good kramer's rule is by a uh, kind of a visual method but you should be experienced to do this okay you as in uh, when you're doing you will learn okay otherwise suddenly you do you you will not be able to say specifically so you should have an experienced observer for this okay and this may show wrong results if the baby is undergoing phototherapy right and um, also if it is very high tsb levels let us say the total serum bilirubin is more than 15 like it's 20 25 then you won't know right maximum you can know is about to 15 anyways it's already danger beyond danger it is if hands are and souls are involved danger they are saying right now let us say you think this baby has uh, jaundice okay so what you will do you will ask the baby uh, you will ask the parents to get a serum bilirubin total total serum bilirubin you will ask them to get tested right then what else you'll ask them to check blood group of mother and baby because if mother is rh negative and baby is rh positive and the mother was sending antibodies to the baby and the baby's blood was getting attacked by these antibodies which have come from the mother continuously they're getting attacked so that is why babies uh, rbcs are breaking and hence there's so much of bilirubin okay so uh, this is called as uh, rh isoimmunization right and then you will check uh, do a peripheral smear you will see lot of broken rbcs how those rbcs will be they'll be all weird shapes like uh, something like this one a ruptured rbc like this ruptured rbcs ruptured rbcs ruptured rbcs you can see in the um, the peripheral smear okay so do all this for the baby water and all you will you do investigation peripheral smear check the blood groups and also check for bilirubin levels you should not forget that okay then coming to the second line second line you will do direct scoops test what is direct scoops test direct scoops test on whom you will do on the baby right direct scoops test is done on whom on the baby right so you will detect the presence of an antibody coating on fetal rbc detects the presence of an antibody coating on the fetal rbc so if there is antibody on this rbc right that means now you have to detect it that means there is something that is waiting to attack the rbc so you will add this coombs serum anti igg antibodies so you are adding the antibodies to these antibodies and then you will see that this antibody is agglutinating this so what does it show you it indicates to you that yes there are antibodies sitting on the baby's rbcs so there is problem what else you want to check <clears throat> hematocrit basically it will reduce because there is so much of hemolysis right reticulocyte count because the rbcs are getting broken the bone marrow will try to make more rbcs so the reticulocytes will be there in the blood okay so this indicates that blood is uh, body is trying to make more rbcs new new fresh fresh babies have come of the rbc reticulocytes have come this will increase in hemolysis because the body is trying to create more okay g6pd levels in rbc <clears throat> because g6pd deficiency again will lead to hemolysis hemolysis will lead to what bilirubin more bilirubin more will lead to jaundice jaundice more will lead to what developing nervous system can get affected yes okay so g6pd levels you will check then etc what and all you will check for some infection sepsis screening thyroid function test because in hypothyroidism there can be prolonged jaundice very important to remember in g6pd levels also prolonged jaundice urine you have to check for what 
for galactosemia i think this should be galactosemia right galactosemia specific enzyme genetic studies for kreigler nudger gilbert and other genetic enzyme deficiencies so you will have to check these children for all these conditions guys we will come to this so you will check for rule out galactosemia you will uh, specific enzyme uh, diseases like kreigler kreigler nudger gilbert and other enzyme deficiencies see there are many conditions in which uh, rbcs can be lysed like um sporocytosis thalassemia sickle cell anemia g6pd deficiency so many uh, enzyme deficiencies like emden meyerhoff deficiency right so many deficiencies there can be hemolysis right these are all the uh, hemolytic anemias actually because of the break in rbcs there can be anemia right but in in this video we are focusing on the bilirubin part okay now let's get back here so this these are the investigations let us look at the table here very important guys just look at this okay all um, jaundice we have put here for newborn just look at this in on day 1 if there is jaundice it can be pathological <coughs> understood right and on day 1 if there is jaundice it can be pathological on day 2 it is appearing you you know you have learnt it it's physiological yes it's physiological but if the on day 2 it exceeds 10 mg per deciliter if it exceeds 10 mg per deciliter then it is pathological on day 2 also if it is there you will think it is physiological but if it is greater than 10 mg per deciliter <clears throat> on the second day it is pathological guys did you, did you understand this it's uh, this was just a rough thing that we told you day 1 is uh, pathological day 2 is physiological this is very rough but understand if the values are per day wise it's greater than on the uh, on the first day greater than 5 mg per deciliter pathological if it is greater than 10 on second it's pathological if it's greater than 15 thereafter it is pathological 15 is where the perms and soles are involved just remember kramer rule now coming to day 5 to day 15 it can peak okay day 5 to day 15 it can peak and uh, just look at this some mild clinical jaundice will be there okay uh, beyond 3 weeks and that is nothing to worry about <coughs> Sometimes it can be because of inadequate breastfeeding. See, we have gone here, we have gone past this. Uh, so, there is a gap here. Beyond 3 weeks, we are talking about 3 weeks and beyond, we have come now. Okay, 3 weeks and beyond. See, mild clinical jaundice can be there. Okay, uh, this could be because of inadequate breastfeeding. See, breastfeeding jaundice does not mean it is because of breastfeeding. It is because of inadequate breastfeeding. Okay, then you will have to ask the mother to give breast milk more to the baby. Okay. So, what did you learn till now? In term babies especially, which are breastfed, a little of jaundice can be there and uh, inadequate breastfeeding could be a cause. It is termed as breastfeeding jaundice. Ask the mother to breastfeed more. Okay. Now, let us come to a terminology here called as prolonged jaundice beyond three weeks. Prolonged jaundice means what? There is persistence of significant jaundice. 10 milligram per deciliter. If it is beyond this, okay, then it will become persistent or prolonged jaundice beyond three weeks this is where now you have to pay attention right? in case the nappy is not getting stained that means it is unconjugated you can think of this as breast milk jaundice okay it is because of breast milk okay and you should still continue giving the breast milk by the way there is nowhere where they tell you to stop it right anyways now let us see it is not breast milk jaundice or you should always rule out these causes. You should not blame it as breast milk jaundice. You should always rule out the other causes. What are the other causes? Please pay attention here. Extra vasated blood, cephalohematoma. You remember when the baby is born on its head, there will be one cephalohematoma. So what did we tell you? Cephalohematoma. Look at this swelling. Basically, it is a cephalohematoma is between the periosteum and the skull. That is where the blood collection is. So, this extra vasation of blood can be causing the hemolysis bilirubin. There is some continuing hemolysis. You will have to check why there is still hemolysis. G6PD deficiency like we, like we told you, it is an enzyme deficiency. Look at this step here. 
in HMP shunt pathway, this glucose is getting converted to glucose 6-phosphate and that is getting converted into something else. This glucose 6-phosphate, who is working on it? This enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme is working on it. When it is uh, processing, it is re um, when it is working, it is releasing NADPH. This NADPH is what we want for our RBCs. RBCs want NADPH to protect it from oxidative stress. So, this uh, G6PD is protecting RPCs via NADPH. Okay. So if there's nobody to protect the RBC, it will lyse. If it lies, hemoglobin is released. Hemoglobin is released, bilirubin is released, bilirubin is released, jaundice. Hypothyroidism. Now, hi, why does hypothyroidism that is cretinism actually in the neonatal words? Why does it lead to hemolysis or jaundice? See, what happens in these cretinism babies, they have hypothyroidism. So, what will happen? They will have an underdeveloped liver. If their liver is underdeveloped, what will happen? It cannot conjugate the bilirubin and excrete it, help in excretion of this bilirubin from the body. So, this bilirubin unconjugated will accumulate, isn't it, leading to jaundice. Very good. So, in this, it is because of underdeveloped liver. Okay. Then you also have to rule out cholestasis. Cholestasis is obstructive jaundice, isn't it? So there is some obstruction to the bile, bile secretion into the intestine, etc. So you have to check out the stool colors, steatoria and all you have to check. Now did you understand guys? Now let us look at the treatment, okay? So treatment only two things are there. Phototherapy, double volume exchange transmission, just two things. Phototherapy, double volume exchange transfusion. Phototherapy, double volume exchange transfusion. Only two things you have to learn. Otherwise, breast milk, make it drink lot of breast milk that you add, okay? Phototherapy itself it can become such a big question for you. Here we will just tell you some points about phototherapy. Basically, uh, harmless blue-green light you give it, okay? Let, we have always seen blue light only actually. Harmless, it is harmless blue light. 460 to 490 nanometer. Please say this 100 times and write it in the exam. 460 to 490 nanometer. 460 to 490 nanometer. Blue light. Blue beam. Harmless. How does this act? It uh, does some isomerization, structural isomerization, configurational isomerization. So isomer, isomer, isomer and uh, remove the bilirubin from the body. Photo oxidation also it can do. Like we told you, phototherapy itself can be a huge question, isn't it? Uh, types of phototherapy lights use CFL lights and LED. Do you know the full form of these at all? CFL, LED. I think L is light. What do you say people? LED I know. Light emitting diode, right? This I have seen in electronics. CFL is a very crazy thing. Compact fluorescent lamp. So basically just adding some extra information here. And once you can see that uh, the levels of bilirubin are lesser than the cutoff, you can stop the phototherapy. Okay. So you should check it 12 hour apart. Hmm? Two times you will check and then you will stop phototherapy, they are saying. Like we told you, phototherapy itself is such a huge topic. We will take that in separate video if possible. Basically, look at the phototherapy being done here. They will just put the baby in a nappy or something and uh, they will cover the eyes and they have put as much as body surface area as possible to be exposed to this light how, at how much distance this light should be all that you should learn okay the baby should be comfortable it should be warm the room all that is important people nowadays you have warmer come phototherapy units right yeah this is about phototherapy what is the other thing exchange transfusion means this is blood exchange and they have told it is a double volume let us look at this um, so we, now we will look at exchange volume, okay, exchange transfusion in newborn. Just see here, they are uh, removing the baby's blood and giving donor's blood. Okay, this donor's blood which they will give is negative blood only, but it will not have antibodies, you should understand. Because the mother's blood is also negative, but the mother has antibodies, right, which she is giving the baby. So you will give negative blood to the baby, okay, this much you can understand. So this is a life-saving procedure. Uh, so basically, when uh, you can give this whenever this Bilirubin levels are very high. We will tell you the cutoff. Okay, just hold on. So, uh, what are the indications that the uh, hemoglobin level is less and bilirubin level is actually called bilirubin level is greater than 4 they are seeing. Or there is total bilirubin level of 20 milligram or more. 
okay this is important guys if it is 20 milligram or more they are thinking about exchange transfusion why 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 they want to change the baby's blood guys because bilirubin high bilirubin is dangerous is toxic to the developing central nervous system very good now so this is about coombs test which they have done now let's move on exchange transfusion what is the objective you want to stop the hemolysis you want to correct the anemia you want to remove the circulating antibodies from the baby's blood you want to remove the uh, sensitized rbcs because these rbcs have some antibodies sitting on them you want to eliminate the bilirubin also you can remove you can remove the antibodies you can remove the sensitized rbcs you can do so many things you can stop the production of more bilirubin so remember you will give the baby rh negative blood okay and uh, <clears throat> you will give fresh blood and you will give 160 ml per kg body weight of the baby let's say this baby is 3 kgs okay you will give around 500 is it 550 ml wow it's a lot of blood how will you do the exchange transfusion umbilical vein if it is available right And the blood should be warm, okay? Don't give cold blood. And you should closely monitor because you are mo uh, giving the baby blood. You should closely monitor this baby. And uh, one milli equivalent of sodium bicarbonate is given to combat acidosis. If there is acidosis, you will give sodium bicarbonate, obviously. And if there is uh, less of calcium, that means this baby is having tetany because of the citrated blood, you can give calcium gluconate to prevent tetany, okay? You have to keep this baby check, uh, checked for hypoglycemia because hypoglycemia can happen because increased insulin secretion. Okay. And again, you may have to do a exchange transfusion based on some criteria. So there is a lot of uh, danger of exchange transfusion. Like you can overload uh, the body with so much blood. So it will overload the heart. There can be air embolism. There can be some clot. There can be tetany. And tetany, we told you, acidosis can happen for which you will give what? Sodium bicarbonate. For tetany, you will give what? Calcium gluconate. You can have hyperkalemia. So, you will have to give something which will reduce the potassium. There can be hypocalcemia that only led to the tetany. So, you will give what? Calcium gluconate. Very good. Hypoglycemia. That's why you should keep the blood sugar in check. We told you. There can be coagulopathies uh, because there can be thrombocytopenia. Less platelet. Okay. See here. Less platelet. So, coagulopathy. Here, there can be clotting also they are seeing so it can happen either ways you have understood phototherapy and uh, exchange transfusion what we do no now look at the exact cutoffs that they are talking about for phototherapy guys the graph is there it's a little uh, difficult to understand just understand this first day if it's greater than 5 second day if it's greater than 10 50 uh, on third day if it is greater than 15 and thereafter if it is greater than 15 just give phototherapy this green red blue lines are actually indicating the term of the baby whether it is whether it is born at 37 38 35 whatever but you just remember we'll take the blue line which is there in the bottom as the cutoff above 5 on the first day above 10 on the second day above 15 on any other day we'll ask for phototherapy now coming to exchange transfusion means you're going to give blood blood exchange so this cutoff is like above 15 or 20 mg per deciliter okay above 15 or 20 mg per deciliter so 15 or 20 okay you can remember like what about premature infant the cutoff what do you think it will be more or less look at this this is actually below 34 32 33 30 31 38 29 28 for this no the cutoff is like 5 10 similarly only above 5 itself phototherapy above 11 is exchange transfusion a little lower cutoff is there that's all you can remember okay so, in this video, we have looked at neonatal jaundice. So, you understood that uh, why it is important because high bilirubin levels can be toxic to the developing central nervous system. Usually, um, on day 1, if there is jaundice, it is pathological. If J day 2, the jaundice appears, it can be physiological. But it is not as simple as that. We will add more complications to it. Uh, so, you should uh, screen all neonates either by vis visible method, Kramer rule or transcutaneous bilirubin uh, monitor or you can uh, do some serum. Uh, you can check the serum bilirubin levels right you can check the serum bilirubin levels 
right or uh, you can check the urine color staining of the diaper or if there is yellow uh, or uh, yellow palm or yellow sole it's also bad okay then uh, creamer rule we have looked at uh, zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 zone 4 zone 5 right based on that you should be able to judge the uh, serum bilirubin level but if it's very very high you cannot tell that value and uh, this needs an experienced person and after phototherapy it will not give you the right values okay then uh, how what will you do for this baby you will uh, check the total serum, serum bilirubin level you will check the blood group of the mother and the baby if there's any incompatibility you will check do a peripheral smear to check if there's hemolysis then also you will do direct scombs test uh, to detect uh, if there's any antibody on the fetal RBC, then you will check hematocrit because there can be anemia, right? Reticulocytes can be more because of hemolysis. There can be G6PD deficiency, so check for, check for G6PD level. Check for uh, infection, check for thyroid function test because if hypothyroidism is there, that can also lead to hem uh, uh, jaundice because there will be an underdeveloped liver. If there's hypothyroidism, sepsis, it could be an infective cause. Then there can be galactosemia. Check for enzymes, some enzymes which can cause some uh, hemolysis, etc. Okay. Then uh, check for the uh, uh, cephalohematoma that could also be causing this uh, excess bilirubin levels. So uh, we have seen um, how to treat basically. Uh, if the values are above 5, 10, or 15 on the first day, second day, or thereafter, you have to do phototherapy. If the values are above 15 or 20, you can do exchange transfusion. For premature infants, this cutoff will be much lower. So how do you do phototherapy? So phototherapy is a harmless blue-green light you will give. It will isomerize the bilirubin. Either it will do a configurational isomerization or a structural isomerization or a photooxidation. But it will try to get the bilirubin out. The types of phototherapy lights are CFL that is compact fluorescent lamp or LED that is light emitting diode li li lights you can use. After uh, uh, if the uh, total serum bilirubin values are less, you will check 12 hours apart. If they are cut uh, less than the cutoff, then you can stop phototherapy and you should still monitor the child. Okay. Then uh, how do you do exchange transfusion? Basically, you will give the uh, you will remove the baby's blood and give it negative blood. Uh, how much you will give? 160. 160 ml per kg weight of the baby, right? You will give it fresh blood, okay? And uh, this baby who is getting exchange transfusion can get acidosis, that it can get low calcium level low, uh, and hyperkalemia, it can have hypoglycemia, so you should treat all those, okay? Then, adjuvant therapy, phenobarbiton, phenobarbiton you can write, then, guys, based on the cause, you'll have to treat the cause. Very important to write that, okay? Just look at the entire uh, neonatal jaundice here. On day one, if there is jaundice, it can be pathological, like we, had, uh, we have written here. Day one, if it is there, it can be pathological. Are you able to see? On day one, if it is there, it can be pathological. On day two, if it is appearing, then it can be physiological. But if it is exceeding 10 milligram per deciliter on the second day, it can be pathological. Day 3 onwards, if it is greater than 15 mg per deciliter, it is pathological. There can be some mild clinical jaundice, uh, it is fine. Okay. <clears throat> uh, if there is inadequate breastfeeding, you should tell the mother to do more breastfeeding. So, that will be breastfeeding jaundice, which is actually because of inadequate feeding. <clears throat> if there is persistence of uh, jaundice beyond 3 weeks, and it is significant jaundice that is greater than 10 mg per deciliter, you will call it as prolonged. For prolonged, it should be greater than 10, remember. Okay, and this will be usually unconjugated and not staining nappies, means it will be breast milk jaundice, but you should continue to give breast milk. Other causes for prolongation of jaundice can be inadequate feeding like we told you, extravasated blood cephalohematoma, hemolysis which is continuing to happen in the baby can be sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, spherocytosis, G6PD deficiency, so many things, right? And it could be hypothyroidism. That's why you should always check for thyroid levels. You should rule out cholestasis, okay? So this is all about jaundice. This summarizes neonatal jaundice, okay? Bye-bye.